Hi everyone, uh, my name is Amos Cromer. And I'm Russell Sand. And we're going to talk today about the topic of integrated supply chain and financial planning. So this is really something uh, we are super happy to share with you today, especially if you want to, let's say, look at it, how supply chain management and uh, the CFO office can really drive together in a holistic end-to-end -end supply chain and financial planning approach. So as said, um, my name is Amos Cromer and I'm the so-called uh, practice director for supply chain planning and analytics across Europe for Westenacher, Russ. And I'm the practice lead for the business planning analytics team, also for European area, so the Dach region, as we say in Germany. The important thing here is that we're talking about collaborative planning, and so we're talking about two completely different teams and technologies, which is why you've got people from two distinct planning practices, the experts, both the tools. Great, thanks. So, uh, first of all, let's start um, to ask the question or quickly elaborate together why do we talk about integrated supply chain and financial planning. So let's first of all set the stage and really look into the main business question actually we wanna, would like to solve here or we would like to tackle. So uh, maybe, maybe let's quickly start um, with the first side or with the customer, right? The customer is, let's say, the, the person or the, the, the point that drives the entire company. Um, yes, first of all, um, we have here the customer that, let's say, um, wants to obtain a product. So when we talk today about the fact, has it really changed in the past years? or past 100 years, what a customer is actually expecting from us. I don't think so, this has always remained the same. So if you are a customer, or let's say um, we all are customers, we, we always want to have actually a required product in full, on time, at an optimal price, right? So this hasn't really changed, so this is nothing new. But let's say this is, of course, a super important expectation from uh, the customer that, let's say, drives uh, the firm and that, and that are expectations we really need to consider. On the other side, we have, of course, um, the firm. So what makes the firm happy? And we as a firm or as a company that need to supply here these expectations, of course, are happy if we can um, supply the required product in full on time, but on the other side at optimal cost, right? So this is the other view that we have on it. So this means when we put these two parties together into one picture, what do we see here? Do we have actually two happy parties or have we here conflicting goals between these two um, Side. So we have the customer side or the market side that wants to obtain the required product in full on time at an optimal price, right? And on the other side, we as a firm or as a company, we are happy if we can supply the required product in full on time at optimal cost, right? So this is a totally different uh, interest that we need to balance here. And of course, we also need them to propagate this down to our supplier. If we want to really have the required product in full on time at the firm in order to be able to supply this in, a, in, in full on time and the required product to the customer, obviously also the supplier needs to make here a good job. So we have some conflicting goals in here in this uh, little network and you all know, since you have learned this at the university, um, most probably that we have conflicting goals. But the question here is, of course, how can we proceed or leverage new capabilities that will help us here to balance these trade-offs? So if we now put these two sides into one further picture, as said, on the left side, we have the firm or our company, and on the right side, the customer. 
So this is, might be a bit be a, a, an abstract picture, but actually it really highlights perfectly that we have really conflicting goals on both sides. So we have the firm that of course wants to keep its cost or cost of goods sold at the minimum. While manufacturing of course has to be at a certain maximum because of course we have bought or at least deployed um, heavy assets that we have where we have depreciation on it. So we want to really have a good capacity uh, usage uh, th th during the entire year so that we can produce great products that of course also contribute um, these contribution margins so and so on. Of course we will most probably also have the topic of sustainability right so in here you also see that the market drives us more and more in the direction where we have to really also produce at a certain sustainability and on the other side also procurement needs to stay at a certain minimum and the inventory of course and the transportation and we have many many other variables that are really playing into into this game where we have really to either let's say as a firm look for the maximum or the minimum on the other side we have the customer right here we have defined that he wants to have the right price at which he actually procures the right product and the expectation is really here to have it in full on time so this now might look like to you as from a from a from a uh, book from a from the from a man management book, but actually perfectly outlines um, the the relationship that we actually could also compute, right? So when we talk about the really the interface between these two parties, I or we called it price performance basket. So really here a firm has to um, it comes back to this point how can we actually deliver the best price performance to our customer, right? So now I would like to hand over to Ross, who will guide you through the next chapter. Thank you, Angus. So it's up to me to now take the problem which Amos has put to us. How are we actually going to tackle this? So let me restate it a little bit. As Amos has already explained, when we're looking at this, we've got a, an optimization problem. We've got a whole number of different variables which are in conflict to one another. There are also completely different ways of looking at this. On the one hand, we could be looking at this from within our own company. We're a manufacturing firm. We've got certain goals that we have to meet. We've got to try to keep our costs down. We've got to try to keep our manufacturing volumes up. We've got to somehow also achieve sustainability goals. We've got to have minimum order quantities for our procurement process. We want to keep our just-in-time inventory as low and as smooth as possible. We want to try to avoid, at the same time, doing too much transportation of goods. So you can already see these are things which are pulling us in completely different directions. And if we're looking at the variables which the customer sees, after all, they're not the ones who are doing the manufacturing. They're looking at what does this mean to them from the product that's on the shelf? Is the price one that they're willing to pay? Is it the quality that they would expect? Can they get the quantities they want in the time that they want? And again, we're being pulled in completely different directions, things which may not actually be possible for the company to do, at least not a meter internal goals. So when human beings are having to do this, this is rather difficult. Now that's why companies will try to organize this process. We're going to find a way of tackling this within how we do business, how we go about for example, looking at our financials, how we're going to take this financial view and how we're going to optimize that. How we're going to look at our manufacturing processes and look at how we might optimize those at our marketing, at, again, the entire supply chain, if not the value chain from our source components, 
to the final product that the customer will then take home with them. And this suddenly becomes not just something which is a problem for us to do in an organizational sense, it becomes a technological problem. Because just think about it. If you're an ordinary supermarket, you don't have five things, five items and one customer. You've got millions of different products having to be brought to tens of thousands of different customers at the right time every other hour. So, if we're trying to optimize this, how can we actually take this technological approach and find a way of dealing with it? Well, the trick here is, of course, to model, first of all, these different value chains. If we're taking a supply chain approach, or if we're taking a financial approach, we're going to create a digital model of the entire process, not just the company itself, what we're doing for manufacturing, but the entire flow from the raw materials to the product which the customer has taken home with them. And so for this, we might be modeling the manufacturing. We're going to be modeling our inputs, the raw materials themselves, the production lines, the machines, the time it takes to switch production from one item to another. Also, the people involved, because machines and companies are again run and worked in by people. So we need to have the right manpower and make sure that we're putting the right number of people hours in the right place. We'll also have logistics and warehousing. Our inventory, again, this is something we have to manage. It costs us to store raw materials. It costs us to store finished goods. We want to try to optimize that. Equally, any disruption in our supply chain, if a lorry doesn't arrive in time with the raw materials we need for production, we might want safety stocks. We might also want buffers to be able to deliver to particular client companies, supermarkets, for example, if there's a sudden mass demand for an item, we've got to meet it. We can't just let them go away empty, they go to our competition. And then again, so our end customers get the products they want in the time frame they want, on the prices they want, all in a way which is possible for us to deliver. And so if we're taking this kind of modeling, we may also be looking at the space in which we're working. So here we've got a simple three-dimensional way of looking at this. So if we're to say, if we're purely looking at this combination of products, customers, and locations, what path can we plot our way through to be able to deliver what we want? So this integrated model that we're talking about, we're trying to model the supply chain itself, how we're producing which products for which customers, at which locations, going to which locations and customers. Equally, we're going to be trying to model the financial aspects of this, which are completely different. Since, in a financial point of view, we're going to be looking at the revenue we might be achieving in a particular location from a particular customer for a particular product. The cost of producing that product in a particular location. This also plays into things. The locations themselves. We might have to set up a new production line. That's going to require an investment which won't be able to amortize itself within a matter of days. We've got to plan ahead, often months and years, and yet react to something which is going to happen within the next five minutes. So it starts becoming quite complicated. And the path which our board might be walking 
is a very narrow one. There's so many different trade-offs we've got to achieve. And as I keep coming back to it, this is an optimization problem. And that's where the technology is going to come in. Let me give you an example of the value chain. One and a half years ago, when we had the sudden corona crisis, all of our supply chains were thrown into complete disarray. Container ships weren't leaving their ports. Factories were being closed down or going on short staff to try to keep the numbers of people in a particular building low. Our customers were in lockdown. Equally, there was sudden unexpected peak demand for things such as masks or hand sanitizer which would never have been expected. And that might be a rather dramatic example, which turned the entire world upside down and every single company had to find a way of managing this efficiently and effectively. But we also have quite ordinary things. Even this particular week, we've got a problem with the gas supply in the sense that the price of gas due to demand across the world is shooting up enormously, which has knock-on effects for one industry after another, including ordinary consumers. And again, it's a question of these trade-offs. How can we suddenly take a shift in our supply chain and reorientate ourselves into a way of meeting these crises, these unexpected hiccups as well, in an optimal way. How can we still cope when we're having to switch our production lines over within a matter of days to something we hadn't expected to get the raw materials in time to get the people again who are going to work the machinery or staff the offices? And even the marketing department might be there knocking at our door asking us if we can't suddenly start making face masks instead of coffee filters, as happened for one German manufacturer. And they did it. But this is not something which is easy to do. And the costs involved. I come from a financial department myself, and so when we're looking at what we might be doing, it's not that easy. We're going to be losing money. We'll have things in warehouses we can't shift and we don't need. We've got to find alternative ways of transporting things. We can't use our cheap trucks and boats. We're suddenly talking about expensive air freight. And with few planes leaving the airports, that is suddenly at an absolute premium. We may also need to invest in new machinery. And that in itself will cost. How can we balance again the prices for our new products and get them to the customers at a price point they'll be happy to pay in reasonable time, despite all of this. So, Amos, what technological options do we have? So, uh, what we have now shown to you is that we start you know, with the first chapter where we have looked at the main business question or challenge we want to solve, right? You have seen on one side, we have defined the expectation of the customer towards you, the firm, that hasn't really changed over the past years and hundred years. It's still in full on time at the correct price, the required product, right? And we need to react on this, of course, in the same way. We also need to make sure that we can deliver product in full on time, the right one, and of course, at certain reasonable costs. So now we need to ask ourselves, how can we actually build up a supply chain planning platform, first of all, and combine this, let's say, with a tool set that the CFO can also use and where access supply chain management or the supply chain planners, let's say, start to really celebrate or make use of an orchestrated planning approach with the CFO office in a tight approach. So let's look at needed SAP technology, let's say, that will help us or will act here as a fundament to build a solution approach. 
So on the left side, we have, let's say, actually the CFO. On the right side, we have the supply chain management. These are these two roles. So let's maybe start with the right side. This is the world of the supply chain management or supply chain planning. There we have the network, the supply chain network. We have the demand network and the supply network that are connected into one holistic network in which we have all the material flows that we have shown, where you have all the direct cost flows, where you have the bill of material logics, where you have demand flows in volume and value, where you have the supply flows in volume and value, and where we really have just one, let's say, or the most important topic we want to solve here within the supply chain planning is actually how can we fulfill the demand of the customer in full on time at the given capacities that we have, but also already, let's say, get out of this or let's say serve the customer at an optimized cost of goods sold or direct cost. So let's say we have this first world that acts more or less in a, in a network oriented way where we have this demand inventory supply uh, way of working and where we have this, this, this huge thought or this, this really this big mission to work in a service level oriented way, right? This is really all the things you're gonna see in one network with the service levels and especially the on time in full and the required product mainly here will be optimized with the help of a tool that we will see later on or that we can maybe already name here. It is SAP IBP. So the right side is SAP IBP. That is, let's say, the supply chain planning platform where we work in a network oriented way, on a horizontal way, where we have the bill of material, this routing um, thoughts and this, this kind of mindset. And on the left side, what do we have there, Russ? We're on the other side here, and you've heard it now from the supply chain team, you've got the finance team. So in a company, that's going to be a completely different building and a completely different mindset. So if we're talking to the CFO, the CFO is not going to be talking about the networks in place, machine hours and the rest of it. We're going to be trying to look at things like the P&L account. We want to know what margins we're going to be making in the next three months because there'll be corporate targets we've got to fulfill. We've got to convince our investors that we're on the right track. Equally, we're going to be doing a regular balance sheet so that we can actually see if we're able to match our liabilities against our assets. Simple things like that. If we're going to be investing in a new production line, the supply chain team might be interested in how many units per hour can we suddenly produce and how many people is it going to demand to run it and the raw materials it will consume. In our case, we've got to look at how can we make that investment? How can we do it in the most cost effective manner, spread it out over the next few years? And as for those inputs, we're going to be looking at our labour costs. We're going to be looking at the electricity we're consuming in terms of price points. And so we're going to take a completely different view of how our company is performing. We're not looking here at the supply chain, we're looking at the accounts. So we might be worried more about flows in the sense of the cash flow. After all, no matter how good your business is doing, if your cash flow ever goes negative, then you could be in serious trouble. If we've got, in the, if we've got debts we need to service, loans we've taken out, we've got to keep doing that. Paying our wage bill at the right time each month, paying our suppliers in a way which will, well, ideally benefit us the most, but it's a balancing act. We're also looking at non-financial constraints. Within Europe, 
we might be expected to do a carbon accounting as well, because our shareholders will expect it. The regulator might expect it. So we've got to keep a very different eye on what we're doing. And for this, we need a tool which will not only let us take a trial balance whenever we need it to be able to simulate a P&L for next month that we can take to the board meeting. We need to have a way in which we can extrapolate what the true costs of that new production line that Amos wants, what that is going to be and how we're going to pay for it. Will it actually work out for us? Is it economic to do so? And so for this, we need a tool which is not just looking at the financial point of view, which thinks about the accounts behind what we're trying to do in the next few months, but which will also help us simulate that to try a particular scenario. What will it, how will it affect us if we hire those five new engineers that Amos needs for the production machinery he also wants from June? We could then simulate, is this possible within Switzerland or the Nordics where power might be cheaper but labour costs might be higher than in, say, Poland? But then again, we've got the sustainability issue that we'd rather be green and not have to worry about most of our power mix coming from coal-fired power stations. So this is something where we can do our trade-offs financially and with quick simulations the future. And so here we're going to be talking about another tool. So SAP has got another cloud product, one which thinks in terms of financial accounts rather than the supply chain. And this is the analytics cloud. And uh, again, to make this point, this, these two tools might be completely separate things. There might well be two completely different teams with two completely different ways of looking at how our company is operating and trying to optimize it. But we need to optimize them together. And so the trick is for our teams and our tools to work hand in hand. And there are integration points because Amos's supply chain team can optimize the flows of products and materials just as well as the finance team can optimize the financial flows. For this though, they need things like detailed costings. If they're given these, then they can optimize the production costs for the lowest costs. We can also give them the financial targets we need because this is where they're trying to address the sales and from their sales forecasts in terms of items we're going to get our projected sales revenue. So again there are two sides always to what we're doing and we're going to be able to integrate those and to plan in a collaborative way. There's always a financial impact to what we're trying to do in the supply network. And equally, everything we want to achieve from a financial point of view has got to be doable in the supply chain. Exactly. So I also qu quickly want to mention um, a further example. Uh, let's say um, often what we see is um, asset in the supply chain world or in the supply chain planning world, we want to be able yeah, to run optimization, especially for example if you get um, a certain forecast, a certain demand in by a customer, right? We will directly be able in IDP to run simulations and optimizations how we're going to fulfill demand. And there we can already work in IDP with a so-called cost optimizer. But this cost optimizer, of course, always works best if it has uh, active costs. And this is, for example, a further integration point where the team, the CFO team, 
on the left side can provide me always the latest and greatest accurate material cost, resource cost, that the optimizer, for example, in the, in the SAP RBP on the right side can use in order to really perfectly align service levels with the cost perspective in order to fulfill at the end of the day this custom demand. So for us today, it is really important to give you or inspire you in this way that you just understand that we have, let's say, two dedicated platforms. And they are not just separated in, in this way in, 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 in the two worlds because it is just like, it's like funny, but it's, let's say, the right side, the supply chain planning on SAP RDP is really working in this horizontal network, uh, network-oriented way with the bill of materials, with the routings, and so on. And the left side, as said by uh, Russ, has this account planning structure. But both roles, of course, need um, or can heavily, let's say, support each other. And this is actually what we want to leverage today, or at least highlight the awareness um, to the audience that they really start to think uh, how, let's say, the CFO and the supply chain teams can work together. Here, Russ, this is more your turn. Absolutely. So let me then jump back into the financial point of view and introduce the analytics cloud. Now, this, in the same way as IBP, is a cloud-based platform, which means that as long as you've got a web browser, you can access it anywhere, whenever you need to. And so your team could be working from home, be in the office, be looking at this in the boardroom, or using their iPhone on the train. So this is, again, a product which you only need a window to, a running web browser to interact with. And it's backed up by SAP's HANA Cloud technology, which is this powerful in-memory analytical database running on the local server farms. So you've got that amount of computing power thrown at whatever you want to do. But we're here talking about finance. And so what would interest us in this from the financial point of view? Well, the obvious thing is it natively handles account-based modeling. This is, with other tools, often rather tricky. It's not easy to set up your chart of accounts. It's not that easy to turn that into either the balance sheet view or the PNL view. So simple things like cost center planning can often be rather confusing. And quite frankly, due to the complexity of some systems, very often our customers are still using Excel when they talk to us. Excel is flexible. It's something anyone from the business team can learn and often is used to using. It's number-based, it's simple. You don't need an IT programmer to actually set up a spreadsheet. This is something which the controlling team would just do themselves. And this is the idea behind the Analytics Cloud. So it's a very friendly tool. It's maybe a little bit of a shock to people who know SAP from years past. It's intended for the business user. It's meant to be the equivalent of your spreadsheet, of your word processor. It's something you use every day. And so it's got several functionalities which are aligned with that. It will use built-in machine learning and a hidden AI to try to judge what it is you want to do and prompt you and help you as you're trying to set up a new planning model. Using simulations is instinctive. The moment you set up a model, of course you're going to be simulating things. Of course you're going to be having published versions. Of course you're going to be working to a calendar with particular deadlines for the team. It just is. It works that way. And then throw in the heady mix of the modern HANA platform, where something like statistical forecasting, you don't really need to worry about, you haven't got to be a data scientist. 
You just right click in your spreadsheet and say extrapolate the cells the next five years, and it does. It shouldn't be so complicated. You can also ask the system, if you're looking at a particular data point, tell me what's interesting about this. I see my cells in China are down 10%. What's going on there? Again, I can ask SAC to analyze it for me and prompt me for what I should be looking at. It might start breaking it down by particular product groups or customers. It will look for correlations and trends and present them to me graphically. And this is the thing. It is richly graphic. If you want to work with spreadsheets, you can. That's what it can do. If you'd rather work with brilliantly coloured charts, live graphs which are tracking your company's performance in real time, it can do that too. And you don't need a programmer. This is something you can click together yourself, the same way you're used to doing it in Excel. But there's also a few hidden functions. If you really do want to do something complicated, for example, run an allocation, there's actually a built-in allocation engine, which is something you don't normally have. So no programming involved. You set up the particular distributions. You set up the statistical key figures. It walks you through. Are you going to be doing account booking between particular accounts or cost elements? And you can even schedule it to run automatically at particular times. And out of the box, you've got your usual friendly features. I might be using it in English. That's great. I see all my accounts. I'll see the corporate structure with the English language names. My colleague might prefer to work in German. Multi-language is built in. So we do that. We work in two different number formats. We work in two different currencies and have those translated. So all of this happens invisibly to the end user. And if you really can't get away from Excel, there's even a plugin. So you can still work with your trusty spreadsheets if you really can't face the cloud, but it's up to our team there. And that really is a, the SAC, a simple, modern, financial, cloud-based tool that you can use anywhere and which throws the entire power of SAP's latest technology behind it. So it's AI and machine learning without the tears. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks a lot, Russ. So as said, this is, or in, in a future solution, when you wanna, let's say, have the CFO integrated with supply chain planning, this will be actually his home, right? So with the, yeah, the PL, the balance sheet, the cash flow, and all these structures that the CFO on a daily basis needs and work with, let's say this will let's say be located in the SAC. Now on the other side, right? We just talked about um, supply chain management that let's say needs to perform in supply chain planning. For example, a sales and operations planning approach, right? So what platform do we leverage here? We have actually SAP integrated business planning. So this is the second platform you need to note down today. And that has a, a, a bit different approach to SEC, right? SEC is the financial planning platform, but if we wanna work in the supply chain, in a supply chain way to balance demand and supply, considering the best service levels for the client, consider, let's say, the, the best way in, in serving this cost efficiently, where we need to have a market network combined with the supply network, we need to have logics that are able to see demand, to create forecasts, and to, let's say, translate this forecast into operations, into distribution, and so on. This would be done here, right? So IDP is actually a new platform to perform a sales and operations planning, to perform demand planning, to perform supply planning, or even more operational supply chain planning, such as mass production scheduling. This has, let's say, 
This is your home where actually bill of materials, structure, resources, capacities are, let's say, really connected in one network. And this second platform will be mainly used by the supply chain planning teams. But as we refer today or really um, emphasize, this should be done integrated with the SAC so that it, the information that the CFO office has can be exchanged to the supply chain team, for example, such as cost structures for our cost optimizer or the different forecasts and supply plans that, for example, supply chain planning team has conducted or, let's say, created, modeled and needs to go back to the CFO so that he can, for example, derive a cash flow forecast from that. I think here we finally have a really good answer how these two teams, even if we have two platforms, can work in an integrated way. Just here um, to summarize, because we will um, soon end, um, we just have six, six to ten minutes left, but just here to summarize, this SAC and IBP combination across different planning horizons, right? So we see here, for example, um, let's start with, with, with the strategic planning uh, on top where we, let's say, would need to create a business plan. This we, for example, see really um, be done in an SAC, right? Um, in, in a CFO environment, or let's say if the entire um, board comes together, we would see this that the business plan would be created in an SAC. And now we have, for example, the fantastic opportunity to take the strategic plan, this target we define, for example, it could be a, a revenue by a product and market combination. We could take this and disaggregate it into a rolling forecast. The rolling forecast is defined as a quarterly budget update. So in here, we could, for example, take this um, business plan that we have created and disaggregated into a rolling forecast, that could be, again, um, be executed in a combination of S&P IBP in the supply chain management environment and SAC of the CFO, that these two teams um, in, a, in a rolling way on in a quarterly update, really update also how they achieve the targets towards the business plan. And the rolling forecast in the next way can then be disaggregated into a so-called sales inventory and operations planning approach that is, let's say, a monthly rolling approach, how sales inventory and operations are, let's say, balanced. Of course, in here we have mainly um, the supply chain management team with the supply chain planners in the leads to conduct this rolling uh, forecast, but of course they produce a lot of data along this way, right, that need to flow uh, back to the CFO or the CFO, of course, also can, let's say, let's say he release the latest prices or latest cost elements on the supply chain so that, of course, the teams, the SAP, IBP environment can work with this. And then we have the operational planning where we, where we, where we see, let's say, the so-called mass of production scheduling. In here, we have, again, an SAP, IBP working in a really short-term way, um, how demand can be controlled, but especially here as well, right? Because we'll have insights and see many things, orders that might come in and how they react to these orders that they can, again, let's say, also forward again to the CFO office, so especially for the cash flow forecast like right in the short term, and also here work together. And at the end of the day, we finished once this, this um, going through this planning uh, horizons, order will at the end land back in the ERP. Here in this example, we have S4HANA, right? The order will land there again, but the entire way has been the supply chain team and the CFO have been. And actually, this is the um, vision or the idea we would like really to share with you today. So if you are starting to th rethink your planning approach today, um, many clients uh, approach us and say, hey, we have so many different planning, uh, planning disciplines and planning horizons. We have to consider things that are, 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 let's say, managed by the controlling, by the CFO and orders by a supply chain planning group or, or by an SN, SN, SNOP team. How can we, let's say, really align here a concept that really, please call us, we would be really happy to share with you those first insights. Maybe 
Um, considering the time, Ross, can you quickly summarize um, these two, um, let's say, processes? Here we have, let's say, just the monthly rolling SNOP on an IBP, right? Where we would perform a demand, inventory, supply, balancing, and SNOP meeting step. So this could be a classical SNOP that is, let's say, run and operated on an IBP. And of course, that should be integrated. With a Absolutely. Plan. So in parallel, the financial team will be working on not quite the mirror image of this, but with similar processes at the same time with similar inputs, where we're taking the existing financial plans, which we had from the end of last month, we're again with the board, communicating the latest targets down, which have got to be met, or market requirements, and we're looking at what's happened operationally. We're then also putting together the budget for this particular month as it's coming in, last minute adjustments, the budget for next month, where we also know what the planned investment orders are, acquired, of course, by the RBT team. We're looking at our capex, the new investments we've been making for them, We've got the headcount in. Again, who are we going to be putting onto what particular track for manufacturing or warehousing or back office staff? We've got the material costs flowing in from the IVP simulations, and these are going to be highly accurate. So this allows us to now work on our overhead, allocate it accordingly by people hours, machine hours, heads. So the entire process here of putting together our quarterly budget, our monthly budget, tracking our cash flow, and then trying to balance this out and optimize it. When we're suddenly seeing that our cash flow is going to be impacted, what can we delay? What can we bring forward? And to then, once we've come to something we're ready to work with, we put it to the board for the seal of approval as they see if this is going to meet the strategic goals and make the necessary changes to still tackle these particular items which may have come up last minute. Perfect, great, thanks a lot. So as I said, I quickly summarized the purpose of this today's um, meeting or pitch session was actually to highlight quickly the idea of connecting the CFO office with the supply chain planning team. And as I said, we have today really highlighted this topic more on a high level point of view. But as I said, if you want to go with us into really concrete steps, how we could tackle this uh, topic together, then please here refer to this slide where we actually would start um, with an inspiration day so you can invite us. And as well, um, we would then follow up with a business case workshop as a second step. So after an inspiration day where you would say, hey, this is really something we want to tackle and we would really lo love here that the NOS Nacher supports us, we would go in a second step in a business case workshop because there together will shape um, the future process together. So a vision of the process and also hard facts, what this could bring and really answer the why should you actually integrate the CFO office with the supply chain. Um, planning team. And after this business case workshop, um, you, we, we, you will get actually a report from us, from Westenacher. With this report, you go then to the business, to the execs, to ask them actually um, for approval for the, for the project. And then we would start um, in a third step, a so-called proof of concept or minimal viable product. So here we start already to design your final solution. But within this design phase, we are also um, already implementing a so-called proof concept or minimal viable product that you really get in touch as fast as possible also with this, the system. We want to bring you financial guys and also supply chain guys as fast as possible onto this uh, new solution, right, that they can already experience and also see, let's say, what the solution will bring to them. Once we have done, or let's say in the third step, finish the design phase in a 
fourth step, we will actually then really start to implement the solution, most probably with a pilot uh, scope where we will then select certain countries or certain plans where we say then, hey, let's actually build up first of all a pilot before we then roll it then out. So as said, we with this slide, we are more or less finished. Um, for us, it was important as said, to highlight the idea and this vision that CFO and supply chain management really have to work tightly together from a planning point of view. And this is, let's say today, this, we, we have presented to you a, a possible approach how this could be done let's say, based on an SAP framework, taking SAC, SAP Analytics Cloud, and IDP, and connecting them together because they have a fantastic standard integration here.